hopefully we'll find something in the valve body that's what's causing the issue. And we'll get to the end of this thing and we'll talk to you about exactly why we're doing this instead of putting a full on valve body in this bad boy. All right, so I'm going to break apart the valve body and the separator plate. I'm going to start taking out these 5 16 bolts all around the perimeter. There are a couple that come up from the bottom or technically the top side of the valve body that are hold, going to keep holding it together. And I'm going to keep them kind of in their orientation on this piece of paper towel. None of these should be very tight. I believe the torque spec is 10 inch pounds though. It's very, very small. Gonna go ahead and take this off. This is your detent for your gear selection. bolts on this side flip this back over and we just have this in this little pan just to try and keep some of the fluid off the workbench there is still going to be a good bit of fluid in this valve body so if you have a nice workbench don't go ahead and rip this open and also if you are a profuse sweater like I am be very mindful and try and not sweat into this thing. Well, it won't rust, but the components on it will rust. It's just bad juju. <laughs> we don't want no bad juju. Right, you. Now that it's separated, I'm fairly sure. This should just pick up. All right, so I did that backwards. This should be down when you do that uh, because these check balls came out. So I believe the C4 has two check balls in it. Yep, one there, one there. And honestly, now is a very good time, if you're doing this at home, snap a picture of where those check balls go. So I'm going to tilt this, get it to drain out most of this fluid, and we'll go from there. I believe I should be able to pull the separator plate off. Yep. All right, so that's your separator plate. Got a gasket beneath it and more maze goodness. sweat away. I'm going to keep sweat rag handy for this. Hopefully that wasn't the part that had brake clean on it. Um, so first part is going to be installing this little control plug as they call it and it is going to go right here in this channel. Now they want you to use some assembly gel or grease to hold it in place. Shove it in there. Don't know how well that grease is going to hold it because it's a little bit oily. But the main thing is just some kind of grease to hold it when you flip it over. And if not, we'll just have to catch it. All right, so next step is to drill out the separator plate. You're drilling out these two holes right here that I marked with a Sharpie, just so that I will not lose them. The supplied drill bit is what you use. Alrighty. 
knock the shavings away from the valve body. And then you're going to have burrs on the back side. So go ahead and use a deburring tool. Clean all of these edges up, leave no metal shavings. Just this hole right here. You want to be very meticulous with this part because any little piece of metal shavings that's left on here that may break off eventually will end up in a valve and it will cause that valve to seize. All right, one of our check balls goes back in that slot right there. I'm going to take some grease, grease this up, and drop that in there. All the grease stayed on my fingers, not the ball. There is an A-type and a B-type gasket. You have to look for the holes. This is type B. Yes. Because those holes right there, when I put that. Right, so this is the one that we need. Alright, that rod sticks through the gasket like so. Alright, you want to lay this over. Just take a peek at all of these holes. Make sure there are none that are obviously being blocked. So now that that's done, I'm going to take some brake clean, clean this off again. A wee little bit. <laughs> And this is probably not the best time to be using paper towels, admittedly. Um, this would be a good time for coffee filters or any kind of lint-free. As you're doing this, just make sure that you're looking at all of the ports and that you don't have any fibers. So I'm going to set you down to line up that channel. That little rod right there get everything over that looks good to me all right and as you're doing this double triple quadruple look at the directions make sure you're not skipping anything because now is the time to fix your mistakes not after you've filled the transmission back with fluid and have taken it down the road and now you have to take it all back apart I believe this one All right, so that is the separator plate and channel body, whatever the technical term for it is. So next up is the actual valves themselves. So follow your instructions. So now we have to pull this little rod out to get this valve to come out. Just using a screwdriver to give a little bit of pressure. You don't want to pry from this side on any of these machine surfaces when possible. There we go. All right, so now you're going to take your screwdriver, go into one of these channels, just push that valve out. You want to avoid as much as possible grabbing onto this with something. Because any kind of markings that you leave in any of these bores is a spot for it to grab and not allow that valve to move. But now this is actually now that I've moved it a bit, this valve is actually being pushed out by that spring. You think we have some trash in there? More than likely. So I'm going to just keep pressing this in and out. When things don't work, act like you have ADHD. <laughs> act like? <laughs> All right, that first leg of, or first ceiling ring of that poppet is popping out now. There it goes.
Okay. So that is the first bit of the accumulator. And I'm pushing this in and then trying to get the screwdriver off of it as quick as possible to allow the spring to shoot it out. Just like that. Right. Then this spring comes out. Right. So this spring gets thrown away. I'm going to look at these valves. I don't see anything that would cause that sticking right away. This one does seem a little bit beat up. But this one actually doesn't move in the bore. This one's locked in place. This is the only one that actually moves. All right, so I don't really see a whole lot that would cause concern. There's a little bit of scuffing in the middle right here. But overall, I think this is fine. I'm going to take a look at the bore. When you're doing this, this is the time to actually look at everything. If you're casting, if your bores have casting defects or are worn out, call time of death on this valve body. Don't waste your time putting it back in the car because you're just going to end up having to take it out or you're not going to be happy with it because it don't work good. I don't see anything jumping out at me in there. All right, so we discard that spring. So I'm gonna pop this back in, drop you in level with that, and then drop a little bar back in there to lock that in. Right, that will be locked in by the channel plate once it's all sandwiched together. So next up is pulling these out. Right, and the same deal. Let's try and find a good spot to push these valves out without forcing anything. Might honestly be able to flip it out. Yep. So that's the first half of that one. That's a yeah, 960. A little big there, son. Yeah, it's the same <laughs> color. You want a 916 or 516 and 3 8 right? Uh, just 516 and 3 Okay. Right, and I'm not going to torque these because we do not have the inch pound torque wrench at this moment. So I'm going to lose, leave those as they are. All right. Next up is this plate. That one popped right out, that's good. As much 
as you can, you want to come and use the spring as it's coming out as your push point. This is pretty much just like a camshaft as you're pulling it out. You do not want to drag it or cause it to bind. No damage on that. Spring is still in there. not really want to move and that is cut back cut back is a decrease in line pressure during light throttle cruise all right so we got the new springs this is the new white spring and the new orange spring if you squeeze them it's much stiffer that one's really loose that one's much harder That'll cause three to two downshift to happen a good bit faster. So I'm gonna go ahead and put you back in. Okay. And then I would look down the bore on this and I did not see a spring in there, so I don't believe it had one installed. Um, gonna double and triple look at that. Yep, I don't see nothing, especially now, because that was really reflective in there. Now this one is going to be very, very fun to install this plate on and by fun I mean horrible because now you have nice strong springs to push this away and not allow it to go okay maybe I lied it might be easy So whoever did this thing just said they didn't need that. All the pressure. Yeah. So it might have been actually been gone through before. Well, I think the transmission has been gone through, but I don't think they put a real honest shift kit in it. They just start doing stuff. They're just doing little stuff. Don't need it. <laughs> Send it. You need to press this spring clip down a little bit. Then push the valve in to free it. Shoot it at your face? Yep, and if you're holding it this way as I am, it's going to shoot towards you or attempt to. over right, just like the first one that we did this one is a little bit go in but it does not want to come out of that bore it 
See, this is why buying a new valve body sometimes is just a good investment. Yeah, we we're trying to save money and at this rate. If we were trying to get paid for what we're doing, yeah, yeah, that's why we'd have already yeah. we would have already bought a new valve body. Yeah, that's why most shops don't offer this anymore. <laughs> See anything to cause concern? Gonna clean these up a little bit. Break clean. Yes, we can. together down here for the spring in the middle So that valve was not too much fun to put back together. I ended up having to take a pick, run it down in here, grab the spring that goes for this poppet, kind of work the pick to where it compressed the spring beneath this edge of it, and then roll the clip in. And yeah, that was annoying, but we're here, we're finished. It's going good. So that valve's done, that valve's done, which are both of these and they are assembled correctly. So now we get to take apart these two right here. So that one's gonna definitely shoot that spring out of there when I take the clip out of it. Definitely, oh, huh? Definitely, because I can see the spring is bent in the bore. It's got so much pressure on it. Look out, Darren! Yep, so <laughs> rock you up. That is Coast Boost. Try that. All 
right, that's the one, thank you. Now flip you over. Another clip? Uh, yeah, another one of those straight bars. That I'm fairly sure is under a lot of spring pressure. <laughs> What's your tip? Oh yeah, there it is. No, it's kind of underwhelming. Oh, it's still stuck on the board. Oh. Okay. Not that bad. I was hoping for more. <laughs> Launch some spare parts into the ether. <laughs> Wake Darren up with the spring. <laughs> okay, so that's you. That's you. Doop. Doop. Valve inside of you. All right, so for this valve section, we are street drive. Give me the spring, give me the spring. It's all coiled up together. Good. All right, so how much do you think that car weighs? Five thousand. I don't know. I don't. It's, it's heavy, but I don't know how heavy. Probably uh, four, uh, okay. three thirty-five somewhere in there. All right. So it's going to get the yellow outer and red inner for oh. race use and vehicles over fifty-five hundred pounds. You're supposed to use the green outer and the red inner. So on that right up there, these go in the trash. Looks like mayonnaise. Doesn't taste like it. <laughs> Much more petroleum-y. Right, that one goes all the way down. And then there is the retainer. It goes with the nipple up. Ooh. All right, I'm going to use the screwdriver trick again, drop it onto the shaft. We'll 
like Popeye down the hole. Doing a little dance. Yeah, trying to trying to stay awake over here, bud. Yeah. All right. Then up next up is the two springs, inner and outer. And I'm going to use screwdriver again just to drop it to make sure that that inner screw inner spring goes over the poppet. Right. I've reassembled the boost, whatever this is called, it just says boost. Boost. I didn't know you could get forced induction from the transmission. There's a joke here, but I'm going to leave it alone. <laughs> right, and this part is definitely really fun because of all the new added spring pressure. You just thought you had spring pressure yeah. before. Got all the sauce. I really hope this peels my face off for as much work as it takes to do it. You haven't even done anything. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's my car. You're the one working on the valve body. I feel kind of bad now. I thought, you know, this wouldn't be too bad. And here we are six Heck weeks nah. later. This really is. It's not anything. really six weeks. All right, so probably can't see much with my hand right here, but this is the only way I can hold this. So you got to finger in the boost valve, then drop in that bar into that slot to retain that. All right. Yep. And every time you put this in, they've got good pictures. Make sure everything that is listed is back in that hole. Right. Next up is boost, or coast boost. This one didn't quite want to come out of that hole, so it's going to be... Oh, and it just fell right in. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Why not? All right, this is going to be another one of those really fun clips that just took 20 some minutes to put in the really sad thing is that somebody will write in and tell us a really easy way to do this which oh, that, if you yeah. do yeah yeah do it please please write in we i've, I've we got a c6 tips. to do later yep <laughs> it's gonna be just too big nope nope, nope. oh nope. what right This is really fine surgery here, folks. I mean, pretty much, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's a good way to do it, though. The punch is actually a good solution to holding the spring in play. Probably look like a crackhead. You do kind of look like you're... Mm -hmm. <laughs> There's meth in these holes. <laughs> Does that make you a method actor? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. Oh, don't, don't fall out of there now, you little... <laughs> I'm really gonna have to have, we gotta find that uh, drum and hi-hat thing so we can use that in those spots. I even got it seated all the way in there. What? So that the first time it moves, the spring isn't bound. The second time it moves. We don't yeah, know. Yeah. Anything could happen. As long as it shifts right the first time. <laughs> It's all I good. did my job. <laughs> all right. So that is all of our springs. Uh, we need to put a check ball right there. And then assemble the two halves. And we're all... We're done. <laughs> all right. So all of the springs are replaced. All of the steps of the instructions have been gone through time and time again. Honestly, read through this about four times. Like I said earlier, take your time, read it. Don't have to redo this again. Pain in the ass. Yes. So, have your channel plate like so, face down with your little orifice control stuck out from the plate. 
try and line up your gasket and your separator plate as much as possible here and make sure to have grease on this check ball here so that when you flip it, it doesn't fall out if it falls out stop put grease on it do it again so roll this over and you're pretty much going to want to sight down your bolt lines your bolt holes to try and line up that orifice rod that's sticking through all right all the bolt holes are lined up shift your separator plate and your gasket this bolt should be loose still i can turn it with my fingertip so line up everything the best you can try to shift it to where all of the holes are uncovered by the gasket uh, any little bit that these are covered it slows down the application time of oil oil has to go around it which causes heat in the oil yada 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 make sure they're all clear as simple as that all right so i'm going to start putting the bolts back in all right and you're going to want to start all of these do not tighten any of them until all of the bolts are in it even these side plates don't torque anything down until these are until the valve body and the separator plate are actually torqued together don't torque anything else because this whole thing can actually distort so if you tighten these down while it's not torqued it can cause leaks <laughs> I get the sense that you're almost done with this. <laughs> On a couple of different levels. <laughs> oh, where did you come from? Cotton Eye Joe. You came from there. Oh, you in? Snug all these down, finger tight. Flip this over. Start all of these backside bolts. And that is all of my bolts there. And we will have one check ball left that did not get reused, and our one two puck, which did not get reinstalled per the instructions. All right, so next up is going to be to torque all of these. And for your valve body, follow your specifications. Instructions have most of them, but if you're running some oddball transmission, look it up and make sure you're using the right specs. So I'm gonna go through, torque these. I think that's it for the day. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. Yeah. I, you and I talked off camera just a little bit ago about whether it was worth it to do a full valve body as opposed to just doing a shift kit. Yeah, it's, it's really up to your own. But it's, if you're talking about a car like this, yeah. all we're trying to do is get the transmission running correctly. Mm -hmm. We wanted to put a shift kit in it, and we figured even if we didn't do anything, we could possibly, if we need to, take this shift kit and put mm -hmm. it in the yeah. other transmission if we throw it in here. Yeah. But if you, because some guys are going to say, why don't you just do a valve body because of all the amount of work that we had to do here. Yeah. But a valve body, the no. whole valve body is what? 400, 400 500 bucks. 300, so somewhere yeah. in that neighborhood, 300 to 400 bucks. I don't know. I can't do just for that when I got what? Yeah. We got $59 in time. And that's where it breaks down for a lot of guys in this stuff. It's about how much time you have into it. And is it time or money? Do you want to spend the money to not spend the time? Yeah. If you're doing this for a hobby or you're trying to get some more money out of the car and you want to learn how to do something, this is a great way to do that. You get the kit. The instructions are really nicely done, very detailed, so you can get what you need to out of like this Transgo kit that we got for the, the Torino. And you learn more about how your transmission works, because not many people honestly know that. Like, no, they don't. I mean, this tells you everything. We still had to look up a couple of things, yeah. like what was it, the the, uh, yeah. the thing with the stuff that goes pooty pooty pooty. What was it? Coast Quick coast. valve or something like that? Or? I don't know. I already forgot. <laughs> yeah, we forgot already, but we went and looked it up and we cut found back. a cutback. Yeah, yeah. So we figured out what the cutback was because we wanted to know from for this. Yeah. Anyway, I think that's great. We got this done. Next, we're going to come back with the driving on it because we're going to do a couple other things off camera. 
but we've shown you how to put a valve body together with a shift kit in it, so now you know how to do that. <laughs> if you want to see how to take and redo the seals on the uh, mechanical arm, we did a video on that a little while back. You can see the link. Darren's put a really cool graphic up in front of me here. There you go. You've got all that information now. Do me a favor, folks. Come back and watch the next time on Auto, Auto Resto Mod. Mod. And if we're not driving it, it's because it's been working <laughs> and we're waiting for a valve body. But no, it's fine. I'm doing worse with better. <laughs> I'm so confident now. Yeah, it's, it's great.